My name's Franz Varga. I am a graphic designer. I have been one since I was 18 years old, and that was more than 20 years ago. So uh, in addition to being a graphic designer, I have severe ADD, which means I can never, ever stay on just one thing. So I'm multidisciplined, which I didn't realize until I, I actually I started in Adelaide, and I didn't realize until I got out of Adelaide that that's kind of rare. But uh, I'm an illustrator, first and foremost, and a graphic designer, but I also do web development, character animation. I've worked in 3D, I do video editing, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. But you're here for Illustrator, which I'm really happy about because that is my favorite application out of all of the Adobe Suite. Nothing has ever yet topped it for me. There's stuff that comes close, and like everybody probably in this room, I started with Photoshop, but Illustrator I love. So essentially, I've been creating artwork for a variety of clients for a very long time, but I'm going to be showing you stuff that I do for myself for fun. So overall, uh, yeah, this little piece is a, just a straight up one, and it, it's the, actually a really good mantra, but it's in Spanish, but it's uh, el diablo esta en los detalles, which means the devil's in the details. The coolest artwork always has depth and layers of, of things. So what are we going to cover today? Today, we're going to look at kind of a way of thinking and some practical applications with across with Adobe Illustrator Draw, which is pretty much my second favorite app ever. And also um, working in Illustrator, we're going to be looking at the way that uh, you can, oops, <laughs> the way that you can utilize uh, the new Adobe stock and integrate that into everything and get a nice flow of stuff. There'll be some things that you would have seen demoed before, but I'm doing this as sort of like a whole meal kind of how to get cool stuff happening in Illustrator. Because the ultimate goal is you don't want to make the technology the focal point. That should just be at your fingertips and you just use it. It should be the creative output and it should be what you're doing at the time. So yeah, just here's just a few simple pieces. These things are all using different degrees of uh, Illustrator's functionality. So in this one alone, we've got some drawn stuff in there. We've got uh, some patterns. We've got some masking and all that sort of stuff. Just out of interest, how many in here are, are like dedicated Illustrator users? Am I talking to the converted? Uh, about 50-50. That's all cool. I'm not going to go too far. And we'll, also, we'll, we'll do the session at the end. I have questions, uh, that sort of thing. If you get a burning desire to like, I don't know, heckle me or ask a question during presentation, do it anyway. It's all good, all right? So, uh, or if I skip something, or you want me to go over it again, that kind of stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'll just show you a few pieces of artwork, and then from there, we're going on to um, just get our, get, sink our teeth into it. So essentially, there's a piece that I did for uh, Anonymous, and actually gave to them. The, the ironic part about it was I produced it, and I sent it to them in an email and I said, hey, um, you're anonymous, don't credit me. And lo and behold, within about 10 minutes, my name popped up on their Facebook feed going, hey, check out what Franz did for us. So I kind of blew the whole anonymous thing, but you know. Okay, uh, this is a minimal Illustrator piece, meaning this was built in Adobe Illustrator Draw. So straight, fired out. It's using layers and everything else, but we'll get into more of the details. Okay, uh, here's a, a Valentine's Day piece that I did for a, a small press release that someone was doing. Uh, you can tell it wasn't really a positive uh, Valentine's Day, but basically Cupid now packs a 45 instead of an arrow. Um, just personal artwork, things I like doing. Um, I like sticking animal heads on people. I don't know why. If anybody's got any ideas, feel free to tell me. Um, Bit of fan artwork. This was a t-shirt design when Hannibal, the TV show, was at its peak. Uh, it got spread around the web a bit and got sort of social coverage. Unfortunately, that the people I was doing it for didn't pick it up and run with it. But uh, it was a fun piece to do nonetheless. Uh, again, just general artwork. This is, uh, again, from Adobe Illustrator Draw. So if you're not using Draw yet, pick it up. It's so much fun. It's easy. And it integrates perfectly with all of this, and you'll get to see that today. And this is a portrait of my wife. I have to show that one off, because, yeah, I think she's gorgeous. So, But basically, again, this is using pretty much every piece of Illustrator that I could use to create 
this image from the straight drawing. Um, if anybody's curious, I've got a Wacom Cintiq Companion 2, so it's not the new one that's really, really flash, but it's the, the almost as flash one from about a year and a half, two years ago. So a lot of this stuff was drawn straight in, but there's brushes galore in here and fill swatches and all that sort of stuff. And also, this is another, it's a personal piece, but it was an experiment. And this, what is different to this, although this probably looks the same as everything else you've seen that I've shown you so far, is that this is actually using generative artwork mixed in with it. So this is using processing and you actually write code and then this thing spits out random stuff at you and you can render PDFs off and then drop it into your artwork afterwards. So there's drawing, there's, there's uh, Illustrator Draw, there's Illustrator Pure, there's pattern swatches, and then on top of that there's this generative stuff, which I've just started experimenting with in the last sort of 12 months. But any rate, okay. So what we're gonna do is a big part of this session, we're gonna have a look at um, the stock, and the other part of it is gonna be libraries. Again, just general show of hands. Who's using their Creative Cloud libraries, like, regularly? All right, who's using it just to store their own stuff? Yeah. Who's using it to share it with teams? Nobody yet? Oh, one, oh, cool, that's awesome. Yeah, so you've got the full sharing stuff. I'm not getting into heaps into sharing. This is more to do with like using it to jump around with projects and, and that sort of stuff. So, okay, let's get to the business end. So I'll just close these files up. If anybody saw anything they like and they wanna know specifically how I did it, Come and ask me after, or save it for the Q&A, and then we'll throw it from there. Okay, so one of the, the, the immediate things that we can show you, and this isn't super new, but again, I think it's a part of the whole picture, is that we can look at the preferences straight off the bat, and the big one that they changed uh, about two releases ago was the interface coloring. As you can see, I like dark stuff, and I don't change it very often, so I've gotta have a little careful look to see where my interface option is, there it is. And of course you can go like work your way through it. So if you're old school and you want it to look like it did back when Illustrator before it was CC, get in here real quick and change your colors. I prefer the dark a bit, I believe the same. Adobe had the basic eth um, ethos when they did it to Photoshop originally, Photoshop was the first one, now they all do it, um, is that you want it to be focused on your artwork. You don't want to be focused on your um, interface as much, you just want to be able to find things. So, and again, when you use it a lot too, you use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So I like a darker background. All right, now, this is the big new one that came out in the last release. So we've got a whole new revised new documents panel. Um, who has actually taken the time to have a quick look at this? Like, have a bit of a dig around with it, yeah? There are not too many of you, because Probably like me, you go, I've got to make something. I'm going to make something cool. I've got a brief. I've got to do this thing. Or, you know, if you want to take it on the mercenary side of things, I've got this new job. I really want to make the money. Let's get into it. So you just go, new, bang, okay, and you're off you go and you're working. But what they did was they've worked out, um, they've revised the new document panel in here in all the apps just to, to run it across the board. The old contents of that very rigid functional box that used to sit on your screen is now condensed into a nice little column here where you can prename your documents, so we'll just call this a demo. You can set your sizes. You've got your um, familiar workspaces, so mo whether it's mobile or web. Now, I'm across the board doing things, but we'll start with print because it's nice and safe. You've got your regular default print sizes, but then down here, we've got templates. And this is the new buttery goodness that Adobe's brought you with their stock libraries. So remember that Adobe stock doesn't just have images or just vector graphics, it's got actual built template files. Now, my inner creative punk rock kid from the straight out of the 80s is sort of going like, don't use a template, make it from scratch. But the realities of it is that sometimes it can be the best thing ever just to give you that little leg up to get you going with a project, especially if you've, you've been given a brief that's just so out there that you need to experiment and get your ideation on. I can't believe I just used that word. All right. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't say it and it's been popping into my head all morning like an evil demon. Uh, okay, so we've got some, some straightforward templates in here and I'll make sure I'm not jumping too far ahead. No, that's all good. Alrighty, so essentially what we can do is 
if we need to do so here we've got a uh, flyer with instructions now I can actually pull up a preview of this and check out what I'm looking at and see if this is the one for me there's a bunch of free stuff on here so you can go home and play with it and that's the other thing I do this is one of my, my grandest hopes for this session when you leave here you want to go home and turn on Illustrator and start doing stuff because it's fun alrighty so if I like a preview, and I'll, I'll go and preview a couple others just so you can see them. So we'll go down here. There's some other posters with big rainbowy things in them, but straight out of the gate. And these these pieces are designed, so they're started off. But it can give you just some raw elements that'll get you, you know, started just to get you running. If you like a preview, and I'm going to go back to that flyer, and then once you've got it, you need to download it. So I'll click download. And hopefully the internet is my friend today. <laughs> it's kind of my friend, almost my friend. Oh, cool. Okay, now it's down and it's actually stored in my, my libraries. There's a template section in there. We'll look at it a bit closer when I get to that point. But if I click open now, up will come a nice, fresh document, all ready to rumble. I'll get into my layers, because remember, layers are your friend. Now these, this is real super duper step-by-step -step stuff, so if you are new to Illustrator and you're still just navigating your way around it, all of this, what you need to do is in here. So it's all set up. We've got um, a breakdown of tips for just some shortcuts and things. We've got... Uh, instructions so you could use this potentially as a learning aid as well like a, I don't know if there's any trainers in the house or if anybody actually lectures in TAFE or, or does private software training these things can save you a heck of a lot of time because you can just dive straight in bang off you go um, basically if we turn off um, some of our elements here so we've got the start and we've got the instructions there's our actual artwork and it's all built out in our layers. You can see it's all nicely put together. It's been put together quite consciously. I'm very big after, especially like I spent a couple of years lecturing um, design students at TAFE and I used to get the freshies. So I was like, it's called Computer One. I always hated the name, but um, basically I get them in the room and go, right, okay, now it's time to be a designer and off you go. And of course, when you start and everyone in this room has done this, it's a mess. Because if then what happens is, and this is the part that that you don't realise when you get all that, you get that creative rush, you get creative joy, and all of a sudden you're full of joy and you do stuff, and next minute the client comes back and goes, we really like this, but can you change this one element? And if the file is in one layer and there's just one big stack of epic materials there, that's a bit harder to do, you know, easier said than done. So yeah, uh, I'm not gonna muck around with this file too much, I just wanted to show you that they're in there, so I'm not gonna save that. But if I need it, it's on call now because I've downloaded it. So it's in my library. So this is recent stuff. And then if I go to print again, you can see that that, if I get down to it, where is it, I've lost it now. There it is. It says free and everything else, but I don't need to download it. I can just open it straight away. So you wind up getting a stock stuff. So if you've got a regular client and they love that particular base look that you developed from it, you can get a fresh start every single time. So you know, it's, it's useful. It's not sexy, but it's useful, all right? <laughs> uh, again, beyond that too, we've got a, I'll just quickly show you this one. This one's I've already downloaded when I was uh, prepping for this session. This is a, a brochure. Now, my, my inner InDesign user, and yes, I use InDesign is sort of going, why are you building a whole brochure in here? But this is really, really useful and it's cool. You can get some basic setup. Again, it's got all the instructions with it. But if I turn all that off, We've got a setup in here where it's something as simple as if I wanted to, I can use my links palette, and there's all the, the different elements linked into this, to locate, and I'll go to this link, so I'll zoom up on it a little bit, and I will double click it, and it should select it, providing nothing is locked. So actually, let's try a different one. Let's try one of the photos, it's probably better. Okay. All right, so just bear with me for a minute. My screen raises is a little bit different to what I'm used to. There we go. So we've got this image in here, 
that we could then relink at any given time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll relink it from my libraries. And actually, let me just change tack a little bit. I'm going to go somewhere else here. So additional to that, if I need a new image, I can go to and browse Adobe Stock straight away. So what we want to do is get into search Adobe Stock. And instead of having a, um, a, an ice-based Alaskan thing, let's change this one to a, a desert one. So we'll start off with, actually we'll make it Australian. do. Now I can save the preview to my computer because again of course you don't want to be purchasing stock images if the client's going to turn around and go no. Now that's on my desktop so I can relink this straight out of the gate. Place it in. Now my colors aren't working right but you can see how quickly and how easily it is that I've, I've got a look that I kind of like about it but I just want to replace some assets in there really fast just to trial it out. So you can use this as a concepting tool so that you can bang something out in 10 minutes, see if it's going to work or not, and then actually commit to the, the concept wholly and start working your way through it. All right. Okay, so next what we're going to do is, all right, so this is the logo, the generic logo that they're using, that they've built in for this. It's a cool enough logo, but it's not going to fit what we're doing. So if I, in an isolated space, start up a new brand new file, now let's work with print and A4. I'm going to call this one logo. And what we'll do is we'll make the world's quickest, oops, quickest, not nastiest, but I'll do my best. So, nah, squares aren't it, we'll do circles. Now everything's all flat design these days, so I'm going to just quickly fire out and build one. I'm doing this with a trackpad because I'm trying to do it quickly. So I'll just make up a quick graphic. Now I want rectangles. Anybody ever read Tintin as a kid? Really boring it under that. So okay, we'll make this base graphic here and we'll just whack a bit of type in it and call it company zero. All right, and we'll chuck it into Futura. Now I'm big, this is my, um, my favorite panel or palette inside of Illustrator, which is the Pathfinder palette. It's your best friend. I like the fact that I can just create very complex compound paths quickly. And as a mantra, one of the things that I really like doing is my, my main sort of methodology in this software, and you saw that the artwork I'm producing, it's fairly dense, there's a lot of details going on, is start simple, go complex. So start small, go big. So with this, you can do that really, really fast. It's a really easy way to do it. Okay, so I've come up with my logo. Let's pretend the client loves it. They've got no soul. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly jump into our libraries. And this is where the muscle starts to come in. Now, I've got my own Illustrator kit. This is the stuff I use for my personal artwork and that kind of thing. You'll see it's fairly full of stuff. Um, it's also full of my experiments. And every time I get a random idea, I'll just do it. I might wind up integrating it. I've just selected all of this. I'm going to drag it and drop it straight into here, and it's going to be added as a graphic. Now, at the moment, it's set to Artwork 1. That's a pretty crap name, especially when you've got as much stuff as I've got going on in my library, and mine's not that big. So what I'm going to do is I've just double-clicked on it, and it's, it's zoomed in on it. This is the actual graphic. You can see the artboard bounds working around it, so it's contained just in there. It's, it's very, very efficient. But what I want to do is I'm going to right-click it, and I am going to rename it, and we'll call it Company Zero Logo. Now, if I wanted to, oops, uh, let's try that again when I'm not changing tools. There we go. Come on. There we go. That's better. All right, so now I've got my Company Zero Logo, but if I go back to my brochure 
And you can see that is a separate piece. This is the artwork I made, okay? If I change this, nothing will happen to it. It's just been done. Uh, it's one file. This is the actual artwork in the library. So I'm going to close both of them up now, and I'm not even going to save my logo now. I don't need to. But what I can do is I can drop and drag and drop this straight out, and then I've got access to it pretty quickly. But okay, oops, I've done it in black, and it's going on a dark background. So let's quickly just move this into position. Oops, there we go. I'm going to resize it real fast. So I'm just using the free transform, and making sure I lock it so it doesn't go out of whack. I'll drop it in here without distorting it. <laughs> Oops. But it's no good to me at this point because it's black on black. So unless you're in Spinal Tap, it's not going to help. But I can quickly jump into the artwork here and select all of it, and I'm going to pick a totally different color. Company Zero is going to be warm colored, so let's make a nice rich red. So we'll do 100, we'll do 100, and then we'll add, that's fire engine red, and if we add 15% sign, we'll get blood red, my favorite color. So we'll save that and close her up, and bang, straight away, it's in there. Now, for the, even though the bulk of you haven't done it yet, if you're working in a team or with maybe you're teamed up with a few different designers and you're in different places and you're sharing a library like this, they'll get that change. So if you do that, it'll go across the board. So if someone in the other side of the country or the other side of the world is doing it, you change it, it's changed. So it'll update in all their artwork as well. Alrighty, I want to make some other changes to this really quickly as well. Now, of course, I'm just using the default content. I'm not going to bother writing type in here. It's not really the point of your, uh, your presence. But what I can do is I can either go through and use the select same as stuff and quickly fire out and find I want the same fill color. So it's given me all those elements, and I can then modify it. You can see I've got a, um, a CMYK global color in here, so it's running to a mix. But the alternative method is also is the recolor artwork. Again, Forewarned. I'm going to show you stuff that you would have maybe seen before, but I'm showing this in the context of getting stuff done quickly and, and uh, hopefully like once you walk away from this, you'll do it quicker than I'm explaining it to you. So it, it just rolls out. But basically, I'm just using the recolor artwork. I've selected the entirety of the, um, the document to do the recolor too. So these are all the colors it's picked up that are in use. Notice that the red from the logo is not in there, but that's because that's linked to a, an asset somewhere else. So if I want it to match, I need to, to make sure that I update the asset too. <coughs> a way to work around that is again, is to go back to my library. So let's get the muscle on with that. Aside from graphics, of course, you can store colors, okay? Um, we can capture them, we can do all that sort of stuff, or what I can do is I can switch to a different library and I've got the Make It Colors here. So this is all in place. I'm going to add swatches. And actually, the first thing I'm going to do is this. And this is a small habit I've got. I'm going to select all unused colors, and I'm going to get rid of them. There we go. Now I'm just dealing with something I can deal with a little bit more readily. I'm going to go to my libraries here, and I'm going to add my color theme to my swatches, and I should now, hopefully that's all come through, there they are. I get a nice, neat little block in a color group. If you're not using color groups, start. Yeah, if you wanna ask me about it, we can talk about it more at the end of the session. So now, I'm gonna set up, grab my recolor artwork, but I can get my colors straight out of the group. So one click and everything will switch over to the Make It Colors. So you can see how quickly, so if you've already established a color theme or a color group, based on corporate colors for your client, or the client has existing pre-existing colors, with these put together, you can recolor straight away. Yeah. Yeah, well, actually this file is working in um, CMYK at the moment. Yeah, the color mixes are coming up and you'd need to check them going pre-press, so doing a color proof. But the base colors, and the only reason that is, and this is sort of like, this is <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. When I was prepping for this, I actually sucked all these colors out of the Make It logo, which I actually stole from the Make It website, which is an SVG graphic, and it's all in RGB. But totally on the ball, yes. Um, well done, thank you. 
Um, yeah, CMY card colors, whatever your mix in the colors are going in is what they're going to come out as. If I was going to press with this as a live job, I would have gone through and I probably would have PMS matched each of these colors just, just to be totally safe. It's because it's using the, the, it's actually sourcing the swatches straight in as opposed to, um, you know, applying them as mixes. It's actually just looking at the group and going, yes, and that's it. Um, it would be, you can increase the amount of colours you've got in your groupings. The only reason that it's set to the five is because this is using Adobe Capture, which we'll look at real quickly anyway as part of the workflow. All right, so straight away, change the colours, and we're in. But like I said, this is going to be a warm, warm piece. So I'm going to go and select all the same fill colour of the green. And now that I've got all of those, I'm going to quickly go in here and just manually mix up a warmer colour. So instead of a green, let's use a, a nice warm orangey colour, something the type will still read on. Whoops, and I didn't select them all. Naughty me. Okay, before I do that, to save myself some energy and effort, I'm going to quickly add that colour to my swatches. Okay, it's in CMYK. Um, okay, let's really, you know, grab Sherman and jump in the Wayback Machine, cultural reference that not everyone in this room will get, and basically have um, just a real, this is, a, this is ancient. This is so ancient, most designers don't even know it's in here, but you've got your little global color, and basically what, by ticking the global color in here, you will make CMYK mixed colors behave as spots, okay? So I'm assuming that all the Illustrator users in here have brought in from their color library, from their color books, and gone and got a, a CMYK, like CMYK to process, um, coded colour and they've brought it in and dropped it into their library and when it comes in you don't get the four colour mixes, you get a slider bar for a percentage because it's treating it like a spot. Turning on the global, it's still a CMYK colour, it's still going to go to CMYK when it goes to print, so when you get your SEPs out it's going to work it out based on the mixes, but if I go to my colour palette I get an available slider so I can actually change the percentages of my, my colour bases. So it's, again, it's just, the, the other part is, and this is the other one, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's been in here forever, and I'll go and do something like this, or I'll teach a class, or I'll do some industry training with a few people, and half the staff in there don't know that this stuff is there. And like, or you'll, or you'll do it, you go, I'll just quickly do this, and you go click, 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 and then all of a sudden, at the back of the room, oh, that would have been so much better to know that when I was doing this job. So it's there, don't forget it's there. All right, so I've got that in my swatches. I can select all the same color real quick and I can swap it out for that specific color manually, which I'm gonna quickly, and there's my other color there. And I'm gonna add that to my group so that now that's in the group. So if I was to use these colors again on another job, I could apply that to a six color group and the six colors will go in there and work their way through. And it's also probably not a bad idea to just organize them and get them all going. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, let's take this one step further and, uh, oops, jumped ahead a little bit. So we've got graphic assets, we're using, um, we're using the library assets and the artwork with that little logo. Um, and actually while I'm at it, I'm going to go back to my library because we're now getting a bit of a theme happening here, right? I'm going to add my logo to this library as well. Not because it's great, because it's not, but because it is useful to me. So I'm going to quickly get into my Illustrator kit because that's where this logo is living. I'm going to open her up. I've got it all in here. I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to go back to my Make It kit and I'm going to drag it and drop it in here. And there we go. So close her up. Come back in here. So here's the artwork here. I can go in and live edit at any given time and I can also apply my colors to it. You can see that the colors go with the asset in the library. All right, so if you're not clean and tidy with it, you're gonna get everything with the kitchen sink or the defaults are gonna come with it as well. Is that the end of the world? Not even remotely, it's all fine. But just keep in mind, if you, like that forward thinking thing, is that you can actually use this stuff to get nice clean assets that are very easy to share and to move around. Just picture yourself doing a job, creating an identity, you do all this stuff, you're then collaborating with another designer, you're sharing a library, and then they start adding stuff to it and it comes in like this, and then all of a sudden you're getting new colors introduced to your job and the assets aren't matching up. So yeah, cleanliness is 
a designer's good friend. I'm going to say best friend. All right, um, you'll notice that this is coming in like a placed image. So at the moment, what it is, is it's actually, it's linked. So it's linked to the library. So again, if I was to change my graphics, so let's actually do that now um, so you can see it, because I talked about it, but I didn't show you. We're going to drop in here, and I'm just going to copy it, and we'll rotate it. And hopefully Zodiac watches don't see me. And once we've done that, it should update. But it's not. Okay, what am I doing here? Oh, no. Oh, wait for it. That's not playing ball. It came out of the other library. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we'll make another change to it in a second now. Let's go back in here. Beyond that too, I'm just going to use the select same and I'm going to get the, um, actually, no, nah, I won't worry about that for now. We'll just do this. Don't want to get off topic. I'm, I am the king of tangents too. Feel free to call me up. Alrighty, so that's some basics. We're using a template in, but you can see it's already starting to look fairly different and we're pushing it in another direction. You get in there, change your fonts, start to change work with the new content and all of a sudden you've got something again in about five, ten minutes and it's quick and you can show it to the client really quickly. Alrighty, so we're going to get rid of these. And I'm going to get into another document here, but this time I'm going to use, uh, we'll do mobile, and we'll grab this little happy icon. Again, we can see the preview, and it shows us all set up. Anybody in here, mobile developers or web, anything like that? No? Okay. Um, if you ever get tasked with designing icons, illustrators and designers often get tasked with those. This thing can be just the best ever. So I'm just downloading it now. And again, just pulling it across and using it as an excuse to have a drink. <sighs> How's that for timing? And open it up. So we've got round icons, square icons. It's got all this stuff meshed into here. But what will happen is if I click this, you'll see that it's like moving as a whole piece. If I isolate it, you say, uh-oh, it's, it's actually a symbol. Now, symbols are, again, a long forgotten friend of, of designers, because I basically can drop into the symbol now and start making edits, or just delete everything. And we'll just put in a, a quick graphic here. So actually, instead of putting you through watching me do simple introductory things, let's go and get, oh, you'll do. Up. Now, a little quick tip there. Notice that didn't come in as a placed object. The reason that didn't happen was I held my option key down while I did it. So if I pull it out and drop it in, it's now coming in as a live graphic. It's just vectors. It's not um, a linked library asset. So I'm going to quickly make this white because this entire thing is set up for white. I'm going to recolor my artwork, and I'm just going to do it really, really rough and ready. So back to the warm colors again. OK, something dusky. That looks kind of centered, but it's not quite. So let's get it centered as well. I'm not going to um, bother with alignment in here. I'll just push it around a little bit. That'll do. OK, so that's done. So if I go back in here and instead of mucking about with icons now, because you haven't known anybody who's a mobile developer or anything like that, this side of the graphic side of things, I've had to do this manually before. It takes hours. It's the worst. Adobe's been kind enough to give you a free template that you can go bang. And so as designers or, or uh, artwork producers, you can then send this file straight on. Thank you. Um, straight on to a developer and they've got all the sizes and permutations they need right out of the gate. They don't need, you don't need to sit there crunching out different si sized uh, graphics all the time. All right, so. Yeah, we've done that. Okay, let's, um, 
start looking, like we'll go back and have a, a closer look at the colour themes. So in the colour themes, you saw me use one that, you know, here's one, the, the cooking show, here's one I prepared earlier. Let's actually make one right now. So before I share my mobile phone screen with you all, I'll get rid of all these text messages. All right. Um, okay. Now. That's right. I should already be there. So. Okay. So there's my phone. And what we're going to do is jump straight in to capture. Now this will be an interesting one because we'll see what kind of colors we get in here. I'm gonna go straight to our colors. I'm gonna to go to my library and we're working with the Make It one, so we'll keep to the Make It one. And now, you've all seen this demo. Does, who in here is using this? Anybody getting color, grabbing color themes? Awesome, that is really cool because you'll know how good it is and hopefully all the rest of you can join in later. So I'm gonna use my camera. <laughs> All right, we'll add a freshie, and we're gonna make a selfie color. That's all very skin looking. That's better. Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, how's that? Make it light. <laughs> I want this in CMYK, because I'm doing this print styling. There's pretty vivid colors in here, but that's all looking pretty good. <laughs> it keeps the photo. <laughs> careful what you sample. It could come back to haunt you. All right, um, and so I'm gonna call this one uh, Pastel Make It. Now again, because this is uh, combined, if you're, even if, if like you really don't wanna use a mobile phone to do this stuff, you can do it online as well. So you've got your color.adobe.com website straight in there, that will let you bring in photos. So you can just straight from your desktop, pull it straight in. So, oops, and I shook my phone. <laughs> uh, cancel, and we are saving the color theme. And there it is there. So I'll switch off my phone again. Thank you guys. And then what we'll do is we'll have a look. Now, if I go into my library, oops, come on, there we are. And there's my pastel make it straight away, all in the same room, really, really quick. What does that mean? That means that I can actually go in here and edit my symbol. Oops, I'll go into the symbols palette to do it. And here it is. And because it's worked off the singular symbol again, it's gonna change everything all at once. But I should, by rights, be able to, oops, I've got to do something again. It's my fault for rushing. I'm gonna add my Set to the swatches. So just so nothing up my sleeve, there it is, pastel make it. That's already labeled and everything. And then I can have that selected, recolor my artwork, click on this. If it, yeah, okay, cool, I'll run with it. <laughs> but not, not the best example, but yeah, you can see straight away how quick it is. It's easy. So you can actually sample something from your environment. Now, Imagine if you're actually doing something for a client and they've got a physical location and it's full of all sorts of stuff that they're into, you can sample your colors out of that and take it away with them and all of a sudden you've got this straight on flow. This stuff is easy, like it's not difficult to do. So the, the point is, and this is getting back to the whole creative workflow for Illustrator, is I don't have to think about what I'm doing, I just have to find out my end results. Okay, so that's enough of the icon. <laughs> but you can see in here, the, it's just, Vomitously delicious, look at that. That's great. <laughs> All right, we'll get rid of that one and move on. Okay, so um, we've got our colors going on. We're doing all that sort of stuff. We've done the icons. We've done our color themes here and bumped around and you've seen a gradient edited straight away with that. So that source gradient is actually those colors are just edited straight over. Alrighty, um, I've had to do quite a few business cards in my time. Um, you've got your cards, you know, you've got those cherry jobs that come in where it's like totally left field and the next thing you know you're talking to your printer and trying to convince them to feed the printed artwork back through the machine to get like double hits of ink. It works, it's really cool. But um, 
yeah. Uh, but then you've got your regular run-of-the-mill jobs. So Adobe comes to the rescue for those sort of run-out things. So if we go into print again, there actually are a, um, here we go, we've got those posters. There's an envelope, wedding kit. Now, where's my business card gone? Uh, invitation, I'll get there. <laughs> so, second row, ah, there, there it is. Do you know why I wasn't seeing this? I've been spent, like, I was, I've messed around with this stuff, of course, to prepare for you guys, so you, you didn't have to help me, but thank you for the help. And um, I've been looking at it in Make It Colors, like the whole time that I'm doing it, and so I actually missed it because it's not in Make It Colors. So again, we've got the same thing here. Now, is this design going to set the world on fire? No, but it's very, very functional. It will work straight away, so you can then take this and then implement your own idea on it straight away. So again, we can get in here and you know, doing simple things like just using our type um, menu, we can modify our fonts, or we can just select all of it. It's all pretty solid design here, so essentially, if I get my type tool up, or type pa uh, palette, it's all in Acumen Pro, but I can go through here and just change it to everything. It'll all change at once. Um, <laughs> When I, when I, if, if this was a, a lab, I'd be getting you to, but we'd have a competition to see who could make the ugliest business card, because it's just one of the best liberating ways to learn these techniques. Um, so yeah, we'll just do agency, that, that'll do. So already up straight out of there, I've got that. I'm gonna quickly jump in and hit my libraries again. We'll keep working with the good old Make It colors. I'm not gonna add that, I'm gonna add it to my swatches first. Which I think I did. There it is. Cool, again. Recolor. Now, why am I so hung up on the recolor thing? One, I like it. And two, you'll notice that I don't have to mess my artwork up. I don't have to select any, like beyond just going select all, I don't have to do anything to the artwork. Because there's nothing worse than like going through and like manually clicking and selecting stuff. You see me use the same, select same as stuff. Okay, it's all old school illustrator technique. But um, with this, you can quickly just refire it like so. And unlike the, lo uh, the icon, that's not too shabby, that, it works, you know. Again, it's still simple, I'm not doing anything revolutionary with it, but I'm, uh, you know, if I wasn't telling, like describing what I was doing as I was going, this is like a, a under a minute to get, bang, get the template. Just try the colors at first, see what's gonna work. Okay, so essentially, yeah, we can go in here, and then all the type, of course, is live, so you can start working with it straight away. Okay. Now I'll get rid of that one. Pretty sure I did everything that I needed to do with that. Of course. No, no. It, it's, yeah, it's matching on like a, a hue values. You can actually set it. So let, actually, that's, that's awesome. Let's do that one real on the fly. So I can put my money where my mouth is. All right, so I'm just gonna get my simple card. Again, it's downloaded. I don't have to download it again. It's here. We're back to the start. If I go all, my, I need to add my swatches from my library. So I'll get in here. I won't use the pastel ones because that didn't work out very well. You can see that it's replaced the colors in here, but that's not what we want. So undo and we'll add it to the swatches. Already in there, everything selected. Hit this. So these are the, you can see it actually, they haven't been, like, this is, um, this is a multiple, multiple color job. It's been built right up. So if I reapply this, what it does is it boils it all down. I can actually tell it from within here, at the moment, it's by default is set to hue forward. So it pushes the hues forward based on the color values. So that's how it's working it out. But it's not, you know, if I don't like this, I can actually go in here and, and tell it, so at the moment it's doing um, scale tints, but I could do exact stuff and change the colors around that way. Or alternatively, um, you know, if I'm doing tweaking stuff, you can see all the colors are in here. Let's move, move these around. Okay, so individual setups like this. Now also keeping in mind that your color groupings too can co uh, accommodate Pantone book colors. So you bring in your Pantone library, you can then reapply non-Pantone artwork to the Pantone artwork and get it working that way. Okay. So, be gone. I don't 
page now. Alrighty. All right, I'm going to get into my passion stuff now, just so because like the, it's been a bit dry white toast, but it's useful, but it's dry white toast. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to um, grab my handy dandy iPad, which is scary because that's my run sheet is on here, and so I won't be looking at that <laughs> two hours later. This is awesome. No. Um, all right, and I'll quickly. Fingers, are you going to play ball? We're going to get into Adobe Illustrator Draw and have a look at some um, of the things that this one does. So, if it plays ball. There we go. Okay. So, this is my iPad. You can see that I use draw a reasonable amount. Um, I've used a variety of stylus with, with iPad, like working, I bet you remember, you know, to get into this sort of stuff. I'm using an Apple Pencil now. If anybody hit, uh, hit up this morning's workshop, uh, they were doing, uh, working with Illustrator and, and drawing stuff. It's a nice control surface, but truth be told, my original stylus that I was doing images like this with, come on, open up. So straight portrait, just a portrait, a picture of a friend of mine. Um, that was drawn with a, I think it cost me $7 and it had a pen in it. So it was like really high tech. So it was just a rubber drawing with a pencil eraser, but you can get the results out of this really, really quick, do limited color stuff and work on it from there. Also, I can actually, um, I'll do it from a nicer file because that was just done on the fly. So. Taking my inspiration from places that I am, like, you know, orbit and things that I like. Here's another picture of my wife. <laughs> Luckily, she lives in northern New South Wales, so you're not going to run into her in the street. I know you! You were that? Yeah, so it might freak her out a little bit. But uh, I like tentacles, I like skulls, I like spattery paint, and that sort of stuff. Personal taste, it sort of comes across in my artwork. But essentially what I can do in here is I can produce, and I'm going to stand over here so I'm not double shouting at you. Um, I can run this artwork out really, really quickly and draw it straight up and make edits or do whatever I want to. So, But beyond that too, this really has come a long way since it first started. So uh, let's get into this one. I have access to my library colours straight away because it's in my kit. Now my... Um, this is using my library. I can change my library to my other libraries as well. So I've got my Illustrator kit here. I've got a bunch of different colors in there. But let's stick with the theme and go with Make It. And I want to use this orange, which I already was using, but I used one I prepared earlier. And um, yeah, you can start working pressure sensitively and producing. Now, this layer is actually using. Um, color blending modes in it as well. So actually, again, just to give me a bit of a, a, an idea, who in here is using Adobe Illustrator Draw, working on the mobile? Awesome. All right. Everybody else that didn't put their hand up, start doing it. All right? It's awesome. Start putting in the hints with the family for Christmas for an iPad. All right. Unfortunately, these only work with iPad Pros, but the new iPad Pro came out a little while ago. You might be able to find a cheaper one. Um, Okay, so essentially we can get in here, pressure sensitive, all really quick and easy. I don't want to, this isn't an, uh, an illustrated draw session, so I'm not just going to make you sit there and watch me draw facial ta extra facial tattoos on my wife's face. But um, what I am going to get you to see is that, yeah, so I can get in there, I'm using my same colour family again from my library, and I can also use it to create shapes. So let's turn a couple of layers off here. And... I'll just boil it right down to just her image. Incidentally, I did this while I was waiting to get into my accommodation yesterday. And so as an expediency thing, just to totally pull back the curtain Wizard of Oz style, I'm working straight over a photo of her. So I'll turn that one off. So there's the photo. Oops, minus the, she doesn't really have a technical tattoo on her cheek. Um, 
<laughs> she does have the others there. Um, yeah, so basically, drop in the photo, and if you're doing, you can do the same methodology within Illustrator as well, and I have done for quick stuff. Drop back your opacity, and then start working over the top in black. I've got a, um, I'll make another draw layer here. I'll start working in black straight out of the gate. Lots of zooming and oops, building it up. This is vector art. That's the coolest bit about it. I'm drawing it live. When I bring it across, which you're going to get to see me do, um, I can create it. And that pressure sensitivity just helps save time. But instead of me standing awkwardly trying to do that, we'll do the cooking show method and go back and we'll just pretend I just drew this all in front of you right now. Okay, so you can see there, straight picture of her face. All right, and what I can do is, if I want to start adding in other elements, this is where the library muscle starts to really come into it. So I'm going to quickly create another draw layer. Now, one of the things that uh, I'm a huge stickler for is naming your layers, especially if you're doing complicated artwork. So that the the other portrait, the actual portrait I showed of you earlier, with all the blue and the animals and stuff, there's a lot going on in there. If I didn't name my layers trying to track down individual pieces would have been nightmarish. The really cool thing, Adobe Illustrator Draw, if I, oops, have it visible. There we go. If I double tap on the draw layer here, straight away I can get there and so I'm gonna call this background element. All righty. So now that I've got the background element in there, I'm going to shoot up to the top and touch on this shapes thing. So these are the, the basic app shapes. So these are built in. So you can do your, your geometrics and you've got French curves as well and some basic shapes. But the fun part starts is when you start working with your libraries because these are all elements I've added myself. We'll cover it too. Even though, like I said, it's not revolutionary stuff, you would have seen um, shape before, but we're going to run through because it's part of the workflow. So again, I like paint splatters. So I'm going to um, chuck a paint splatter in here. And again, I've got the shape straight away. I can blow it up, so I reduce the size of the artwork and increase the size of the piece. Or if I pinch and squeeze on the actual piece, I can create that. And then if I want to add elements to it, so what I was using in that other one, and I'll turn it back on in a minute, is I was basically breaking up the form of it, to make it interesting, I was breaking up the form by using black and just a double tap will drop it in. I can get in there, rotate it around. I can start to give it a flow. Right. And because I've got my layers going, I've got my skin colors and skin tones and my black lines on top of that, I can put it underneath and go nuts. Uh, the little X at the bottom will get rid of it for you, so I've got some other spatters here, so let's get this one in. But this time I'm gonna use my Make It Library and start using the, that nice warm color here. Again, drop it in, and that little X at the bottom is how you get rid of it. Tap that, it goes away. So, we can pull this sort of stuff in there really, really quickly. I'll get rid of my demo layer and go back. So I've got elements in my library such as some tentacles and some other tentacles, and then I've just gone in and created a layer and painted the color in underneath, which is, you gotta admit, that's awesome to be able to paint straight underneath your, other, your artwork. But I can pull these things together really, really quickly. Again, this was waiting, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes for, to get into my accommodation. So I've got these elements all in here. And I've named as many layers as I feel I need to. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, um, actually, I'm going to show one, one other thing. And this is where I get to use two screens at once. The biggest thing with vector artwork, and especially getting it, is that if you don't take a bit of time and care, vector artwork will always look like vector artwork. Now, if that's the look you're going for, which sometimes you do, it's awesome. But the reality of it is, is that it's that the, the devil's in the details, the, the texture, the visceral stuff. It's the same problem that 3D animation suffers from because it doesn't have enough texture, it's not dirty enough. So to get something interesting, I like using textures. So again, I'm gonna quickly um, get my iPhone to show up on the screen. And again, make sure that there aren't any text messages showing up. And there it is there. <laughs> it's not to scale. Um, 
And we're going to jump in and use capture, but we're not going to use the color, we're going to use the shapes. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a new shape and here, again, cooking show, moleskin sketchbook, uh, 15 minutes, about an hour ago, just noodled away, did a, did a phone doodle. Again, keeping into theme. I'm just going to get my uh, style up here. Okay. Now I'm going to quickly refine it. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting a race and I'm going to get rid of any kind of marks that were left on from the spine of my sketchbook coming in. I'm going to jump over to the next part. Now, the auto smooth feature in here is amazing. It, the algorithms in it are really, really switched on. They'll go very quickly and, and go over. But I always like to see it switched off first because sometimes the end result you'll get is going to work just for the artwork that you've created better with it switched off than switched on. So I'm going to quickly switch it on now and compare. And you can see the smoothing's coming in. It's got to work to do this because, after all, it's, it's graphic recognition. And I dare say we're going to not use it because it's going to take too long. Really there? Ah, there we go. So that's the smooth version. Um, probably, on the, I don't know if on the projection you can sort of see the difference between the two, but I'll go with the smooth one. So I'm going to go next. I'm going to call this skull and tentacles. I'm going to make sure it's going to go. I'm going to put it in my Make It library because that's the one I'm using at the moment. And I'll save it off. And there it is in my Make It library. So I'm done with the phone. Let's turn that off. Oops. There we go. Back to my iPad again. And as you already saw earlier, I can, I'm going to go down here. I've got my little cheek tattoo layer that I'm working with. If I, first off, out of the gate, grab the appropriate color I was using, I'm going to go to my shapes. I'm going to go to my Illustrator kit, but I'm going to change the library to the Make It one. And there it is. And I'm going to position it. Now, I could use this as a standalone graphic, so I'm just putting it in the background, like quick stuff. But what I'm going to use this for in this case, I'm actually going to need to, I'm getting ahead of myself here, I'm going to quickly delete the content of that layer. There we go. Okay, then we'll go back to shapes. Now again, I'm going for texture here. This is, this is the goal. So I'll bring it up a little bit there. Go back to the appropriate tool with the right color in it. Any of the tools will fill these shapes up, by the way. It's just a tap. I'll get rid of it. Zoom in. And while I'm at it, I'll just tidy it up. And it's just, it gives you like points of interest. You know, it makes things a little bit more, you know, gritty, a bit more, more visceral, you know, so that way you get that extra overall feeling. Okay, now. We're going to quickly jump in and we're going to hit the, uh, the upload button. I'm going to go to my desktop apps and hit Illustrator. And this is where we get to test the, um, the Wi-Fi in this place out. It always works, it just sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I've got a tick. I'll quickly turn off my iPad and there's my artwork straight away in Illustrator. Now, what we're going to do is if I go to my layers here, you can see that straight away I've got my labelled layers as I've gone. So I've, I've actually taken care of that prep work that, um, you know, used to, back in the day when, when uh, Adobe Ideas came out, it was revelated to me. It was awesome. You could sit there with a little wafer thing thing and draw away like you're in a sketchbook and then get your stuff into Illustrator. But the layers always came across as the default names. Something as small as this is something like, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's accounting, it's, it's really, really lightweight, but it makes an epic difference in producing quick, easy, fast artwork and getting that stuff out. I don't have to think about doing it when I set up, because that's time I could spend going, right, what am I going to do next with this? So I can start bringing it all in. 
if I wanted to put some sort of um, other element in there, I'm going to quickly go in and get my shape. I can pull that out straight away. Of course, I'm going to be, I'm actually going to practice what I preach. And we'll call this type, actually. That's probably a smarter move. Type. Now, what also I'm going to do here real quick, and this is a, a real simple old school thing. I'm going to get rid of all my hidden layers because I'm not using them in the design, so I don't need them. Actually, I might keep, oh, no, nah, I'm going to get rid of that. And then they all go. When you're working in Illustrator Draw, it's really important to remember as well that um, the background color comes in as a flat panel layer, like of a, of a single, and it's an off-white, like a kind of a paper texture. It's really lovely to work on, but you just need to keep it in the back of your head that when you bring it across to Illustrator, it will still be there unless you throw it away. That being said, we all do it when we create stuff straight on paper, is that we're working with, um, uh, you know, like the background color is what we're starting with. So you're putting your black marks on top of your that buff color. What happens is when you get rid of it, if you didn't go to the trouble of creating an undercolor where I needed white, so there you can see there's a shape there. And the only real difference between this and artwork you would have produced in Illustrator is that it's just slightly more dense in the points, which you can simplify anyway if you need to. But if I just use the, the paper color, you can see that this is actually transparent. Does it matter if I'm working on a white page in Illustrator? Well, no, not really, but you need to be aware of it if you're printing on something other than that or if you're producing artwork. It's a gotcha. You know, you go there, you get the thing output, you put it on another coloured background, all of a sudden her eyes change to red or her eyes change to whatever the back color is, background colour is. So it's really, really important to work around that. But, okay, so now I've got my type layer. Um, now, for cleanliness and, and keeping it neat, I am going to... Uh, where are you? Oops. I'm going to select all these layers. I'm going to do a right click if it lets me. Oh, it's not going to let me know. It's in here, sorry. Uh, in the uh, fly out menu of the panel. And I'm going to collect in a new layer. And I'll just call it illustration. Again, big lots of layers, dense, dense artwork, you know, that sort of stuff. This is an absolute workflow um, developer send. Because essentially, my illustration is intact, it's all in here. All the labelled layers are in here as sub-layers of this new layer. So it's really, really quick and easy to get that in together. But I've got it in just one place, which means I can select the entire thing. You can see the selection colours are multiple, like all over, but this will act as its own global element. So I can drag it around, move it however I need to, scale it, which is a really big one. Okay. Now, deselect that. I'll just quickly rattle this one out and then I'm going to show you something else in Illustrator Draw that's a real, real game changer in terms of just making things easier. So I'll grab my um, graphic element here, pull it out. It's just straight vectors again. I can resize it. I can drop it into place. I can make two of them facing each way. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to build this up. Now, before I forget it, I really want to show you this thing. Because there's not heaps of you in here working with um, Illustrator Door yet, hopefully by the time you finish this session, you'll want to go off and play with it. Oops, that's right. I'm going to do that. There we go. OK. One of the biggest problems that happened when these apps first came out You'd choose your format. So actually, um, ideas didn't even have format sizes. So if I create a new file in here, I get to choose the format sizes that I'm working with. So if you know it's going to be for a poster, you can start working out size. But we all know how we work. And I, I'm totally guilty of it in Illustrator all the time. Uh, I might start with an A4 document. It rarely finishes as one. Like I'll, I'll spill out. I'll grow up bigger and bigger and do all this sort of stuff. The artboard tool in here, and I'm hoping everyone's familiar with that, um, works great. You can name your artboards, you can resize them, you can do quick changes as you need to, and you can generate multiple sizes within one file. So you can do iterations of your artwork based on if you're doing print work, you can do a poster, but then you can make a business card and, a, and a, um, the frontage for a flyer out of it, all in the one file. So if I go into here, and I, so I'd pick one of these files based on, like so there's digital illustration presets, there's print presets, so again, they're working in pixels or working in um, 
uh, metric or and, and imperial. Uh, you've got some defaults as well. But then once you got what you got, and in this case, I think this one started out as an A3, all of a sudden in here, you kind of run out of space and you, you, you start going off the page and you're working in other areas. Well, it's really, really cool now because what you can do, oops, once I get into it to work on it, if I go into here, I can actually get straight away and choose format. So this is set up as an A2. It brings me back to the same op, um, window and I can say, well, I want to do it as an A3 portrait. And then it comes into another screen where basically I can resize all my artwork just to fit what I'm doing. So if I run out of room, change your format size, it gives you the opportunity to uniformly resize all the artwork on all the layers without flattening your layers. So again, it's this, these time-saving things. Don't get constrained. Like we've always sort of hit that wall where you've done it and it's the wrong size because you've got too big or you've grown out your image. And instead of randomly go, you know, trying to blanket select stuff. You can't do that in here. That's how you do it. It's really, really cool. It's only in the last update that that came in. Very fun stuff. All right, so let's loop back to Illustrator. You all still with me? Yep. yep. Cool. I'm, I'm going to uh, assume that your silence is just absolute awe at Illustrator as opposed to, it's the end of the day, I want to go. <laughs> All righty. So what we're going to look at next is, oh, there we go. So I've gone from my illustration, I had it in draw, I've brought it into here, I've started working on it further. Uh, I have my previously created artwork that you just, we created in the sesh, straight through shape, I've already dropped it in. I'm probably going to get rid of it because it doesn't work where it is. Um, it's on the desktop now. I can um, modify. Now, if I wanted to, I've got all my colours going on in here, but again, not that I'm trying to beat this horse to death, but again, with a, a complex illustration like this, I can, can select, I can add my colours. Now, again, this is the other interesting thing. When they come across from Illustr Adobe Illustrator Draw, they don't bring a swatch library with them. It's not like the templates, because Illustrator files keep their swatch libraries. Draw doesn't. So I can go back to my Creative Cloud library, and I can add to swatches, or I'll say, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go retro on you again. I'm gonna select everything on the page. I'm gonna make sure that I have my layers available to me. So I've got all the stuff here. I can always go to my swatches palette, to the drop down, and choose add selected colors. And everything in my file will come through as globals. It is RGB, but that could be changed relatively easily. But uh, yeah, that's how you do it if you're not using the library stuff. Important just to show you real quick. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly get my library back up. So I just cleared that out. I just undid it. Um, and there's my library. We're going to add that to the swatches. So you're all going to remember that one now. I've shown you like four times. And I've got all this selected. I'm going to recolor my artwork based on that, which has made it really kind of freaky. That's kind of cool, but not quite what I'm after. If I pop this down, I can open out the color swatch, um, the color group, and what I can do is I can then go and find the colors that I want. So I don't want her to have a green face. I wanted to use the warm colors for that. So I should be able to, whoops, no, hang on. Color swatches, so I just double clicked on that, um, that little box, okay? And I can get in here and choose that and go OK, and now it's switched it over. I can get into this green one here, and we'll switch that out, and we'll make that one the green. So I actually have individual color control. Sorry, I didn't answer the question totally like this before, but I wanted to get to this bit. So, all right. So um, and I'll say yes. And then the only thing I've got to do for a tidy up is, for some reason, her eyebrow went red. I don't know why. There we go. Actually, I know, I, I, I can guess. I reckon the eyebrow went red because when you first start using Adobe Illustrator Draw, by default, the, the original color is it's a black, but it's not a rich black. It's kind of like a process black. So it's about 90%, uh, maybe 85% black. So when you start, and then all of a sudden, if you go and switch, which I did because it's a habit, it's one of my little foibles, you jump in there and start doing it, and then go, oh, I've got to do this in black, and you go to mix the color up again, and you look, and you go, okay, it's not dark enough, but the rest of your artwork's already black. Like already not that black, it's the, the lighter black, the other black. 
All righty. So we've got that. Now, if I, because I'm all signed up with the cloud and I've got everything running through there. Oh, uh, let's just show you a couple little dry, um, dry bits in here real, real quick. All right, I have my type layer here. Okay, and get into my layers. All right. One of the big changes with the type tool in here, and again, this is a workflow thing. You used to click the type, type tool and you get a flashing eye bar. Now, you get Laura Ipsum text flowing straight in. So you can get an idea of what you're working with straight out of the gate. But here's where it gets kind of more interesting. Now, I'm just going to quickly get rid of that. I'm going to use a tool that most people play with when they first open Illustrator and then they never use it again. I need it in stroke. It's the spiral tool. And um, what I'm going to do with the spiral tool is I'm going to use type on a path. I'm going to click that on there. Again, I can get my Laura Ipsum straight away. Okay. I can see that it's not working at the minute, but I can adjust this without any real trouble at all. But what I want to do is with this selection, I want to go place. And I've got this little text file here. And I'm going to click place. And it should drop in, but it made a liar of me. OK, hang a sec. Oh, that's why. OK, let's start again real quick. So spiral. Type in a path. I'm going to click it down here somewhere. I'm going to actually, before I do that, I'm going to go file and place. Demo text. All right. We're going to remove any extra carriage returns. We'll go OK. And I should be able to place that straight on to the path. So essentially, I can drop text from an external file straight onto a path, straight through there. Anybody want to see that again? Or you, you got it the first time? Oh, cool. All right. OK, so I'm going to get rid of that because I don't like the font, and I don't want you to sit here while I choose a font to put under this picture. But last but not least, I should. Uh, where are we? Okay, you can package your artwork now. That's all cool. I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to get to. So, all right.